Welcome back aboard for the next part of Library of Ruina. In the last part, we had uh, an extra long part with Fina, seeing how she first kept asking for more and more of her birds. And now she has three abnormalities, and is literally on par with Shesset and Tiferet, which means, technically speaking, her flaws is finally able to join the battle as well. And, more surprisingly, she was able to gain her fifth party member in form of Gremlin, who has a very special design, I have to say. And I'm going to pull up uh, the application from our lovely little Gremlin. They literally don't have a background story. And the only line that they gave me is I don't care and the colors from the character itself. So, uh, yeah, I pretty much let him say I don't care. I guess he's kind of like our Pokemon around here and his catchphrase and his only sentence that he's able to talk around here is I don't care. Okay? Okay, that's gonna be running gig with Gremlin. He doesn't care about a thing, but actually he does care. As you can see with the exclamation mark, I'm not sure if you, got, if you guys were able to catch that. He doesn't care, but he actually cares, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, now. Now, without any further ado, I'm really sorry, Tiferet. Things didn't went as planned. I actually wanted to uh, do one abnormality each in the last part. One for Bina and one for Tiferet. But seeing how Bina literally asked for more and more... I guess you kind of have to wait for the next abnormality to show itself. I mean, maybe once we finish up the next one, it's, it's gonna to reveal itself. Who knows, right? Maybe. I mean, even if it doesn't, if we go the other way with the thumbs, at the very least at that point, Hawkman must have asked for an abnormality, seeing how he literally hasn't even had one of them yet. So there's a high chance he is going to get one. So that means... At the very least, once Hawkmar demands for his abnormality, you certainly are going to have a chance to get yours as well. Don't worry, don't worry Tiferet, your time is going to come, you just have to wait a bit longer, right? <laughs> Nevertheless, let us head in there now and see who is actually going to come back now. Are they actually going to fight right away or are they going to take a bit more time before attempting it? They're literally still in the library! They haven't even left. They're hanging around the entrance area. Why aren't you going out or escaping in order to recover? Literally, you're wounded. How about some backup? I mean, sure, you're going to you you quit. They might not even give you any backup, but still, I would still not take my chances around here. <laughs> Fine. I don't need to hear another word from you. If you're so fearful of death, leave me and escape by yourself. I wouldn't have brought you here with me if it weren't if I were such a coward, fearing for my life. There has to be some reason you've done this then. If your reasoning is unsatisfactory, know that there will be consequences to your actions for saving my goddamn life. Director, your battle will be nothing more than a, a messy scrap if you try to keep up in your current state, man. You have to realize it yourself. You're barely on foot. You're covered in blood. Out of my way! Oh, Step aside! I am as composed as I can be! You are not composed! You literally attacked him! You can't even best your own subordinate right now, Director. There's nothing composure about charging blindly into the fray and brandishing your sword like a mad woman. They are force that must be destroyed anyways. In fact, I would argue that it would be best this way as I can firmly grasp my blade with an undotted heart, unshaken by fear. Even if there were an opponent that were in such a fight, wielding your blade while you've lost yourself will only yield a pointless and unified revenge. They say anger is needed in order to face the enemy, but an excess of that emotion will ultimately hurt yourself. Fury shouldn't be the only motivation to besear oneself. I thought you knew that well, Director. You're the one who taught me that. I'll spill my own blood if I can't see where the edge of my sword is pointing after all. I have no resolve to show to those who have taken what is mine. They had the nerves to make an offer where we must put our lives on the line to earn it back. Such absurdity! Now tell me, why should I treat them with any courtesy? 
Even Den! Oh my god! Why are you so cruel to him? <laughs> He's literally trying to help! That's not how Lawel would have reacted. So please, Xiao, gather your senses! Yeah! Think about Lawel! You, you care about his opinion at least! Where is? Nowhere. I know that the library didn't snatch the well in Sector 2 away from us. I'm well aware that they took their fair offer and met a bet and paid the rightful price for losing it. But what can I do when I simply cannot bring myself to accept that? Was it truly done of their own volition? Can anyone say with utmost certainty that non-coercion was involved in their decisions? I mean, they did ask. Angela dis did in fact ask about that. And he did say he, he made that decision in order to protect what he loves. So in that regard, sure, there was maybe a slight bit of coercion, but in the end, it was his own choice. He, he might have even done that for you. Whenever my mind was plagued with such thoughts, I couldn't make a rational judgment. Is it because Shun and the other fixers are dead? Is that why you're acting like this? You would be right. At first, I thought I only had to care about my own safety. As long as I could get my hands on Lowell's book, I decided that I wouldn't care about my surroundings, even if it meant I would have no one to rely on once everything was over. But as I saw my colleagues die out one by one, my mind began to waver. Am I truly going down the righteous path? Is it truly right as a human being to think for myself and only myself? And the many of those who trusted me and followed me have perished. Should I overlook their dead and keep moving forward? Hmm. If my selfishness is causing harm to others, shouldn't I stop it before it's too late? Shouldn't I save those who still have a chance? If I had to make a choice, who should be putting up with the hardship? Is it you or I? Miris, answer me. I'm no longer certain what I should put first. I'm not the one to give you an answer for that. How should I know better than you about yourself? You know I'm not in any way wiser than you. Here's what I say, Zhao. None of the Fixer who followed you were forced by anyone to do so. And I'm no different. There can't be any compulsion about trusting you and willingly following your lead. Now can there? Call it hardness, but as with everyone else, if it was your power we were after, we would have left you once your authority faded. You've stepped down from the Leo Section 1. You're not in position to pressure us anymore, and we aren't obligated by any duty to obey you. What you're saying is that I can stick to my belief and move on, the same way you keep believing in me and acting for me. Like a cup of tea that maintains its good scent after half is gone and a quarter of the day has passed. He's always sticking by your side. A true fellow at heart, even though you striked him twice and he's literally bleeding probably even more than before. Shall? Oh, don't, don't you hear sound? A warm and charming voice, almost as if it were out of this world. You, a sound? What are you talking about? I don't hear anything other than our own voices, you know? What is she? What? You're wrong. No. Maybe that is true to what you say. What? What the? <laughs> Are you calling me selfish? No, I don't think so. Is she talking to herself? A human cannot live alone. No man is an island entirely of itself. They need someone else. Yes. Someone who I will keep alive. Someone who will become the reason for me to keep on living, no matter what. Someone can be alive because I am there with them, as a person can live thanks to me. I myself should not expire. A way to protect you all and myself at the same time. I shouldn't die by sharing myself and sharing the people around me. Therefore, what you're saying isn't right. I won't be deceived by your temptations. Yes, I suppose this is what you mean when you said a selfish mind should be viewed negatively. What the hell? I'm sorry, I had let my own emotion overwhelm me and failed to lead you right. 
This will be the last time I apologize to you and everyone else. Miris, I'm still in the dark and I cannot see ahead. I'm frankly afraid and I might stray onto the wrong path sometimes. However, I trust myself to return to the proper way as I sturdily press onward. Just because I cannot see the way ahead doesn't mean that the way doesn't exist. Did she just talk to- How are you even able to see that? That was inside of the library, I know, but I thought we can only spy on them if they have an inv- Then again. <laughs> Angela's able to see everything around here, right? Nevertheless, did she just manifest ego just now? It certainly resembles an ego. Although it was incomplete, or rather it was incomplete like Phillips. She was mumbling to herself as well, but it sounded like she was talking to someone. The voice couldn't be heard, but Xiao could. And even Miras wasn't able to hear it at all. Kinda like abnormalities then. What do you mean by that? I can hear some sort of voice whenever I borrow strength from the abnormalities here. You can? I thought I, I just uh, I just gave them a voice for fun, but they, actually, they can actually talk. The other librarians can hear what I hear. The voice is only audible to one person. Sometimes a voice filled with rage rings throughout my head, and at other times I hear a sorrowful wail, and my mind gets sorta of shaked by those voices somehow. Listening to it sometimes makes me feel something is boiling up inside of me, or cooling my head down all of a sudden. I think the voice Xiao heard is different from the one you and Gabora hear. In what way? The voices you heard will only say whatever they want to say, one-sidedly. I'm sure there are exceptions, but most would probably behave that way. On the other hand, Xiao was talking with the voice. She was in a conversation with whispers that seemed to want something to happen to her. Hmm. I'm not so sure. We don't have a solid evidence to prove that voice was different just yet. I mean, we only heard part of the conversation. Anyhow, we've got to receive her before anything else. The problem is, how are we going to deal with that figuratively beast of a person? But then again, she's already hurt, so it shouldn't really be that bad, right? She still has 400 health. I thought she was hurt. She had barely any time to recover. Huh. I have two floors! They actually give me a second floor? Oh, how nice! Shimmering. Oh no. Okay. Pharaoh. Forces of the wildfire. That's still the same. Hugging fire sitting on a brushwood. So basically, the whole fire gimmick is still around. She's gonna increase the burn stacks and spread it around equally. Signal point is still around in her anchor in order to get more motion points. Fiery dense slash. Okay, that one seems new. Inflict two burn. Inflict one burn. So she has access to counter dice as well. Motional turbulence is still around. Fiery walls. God, the picture. Coordinated assault. <laughs> okay. Combat start. Give one strength, two protection, and two stagger protection to a random ally, which is mirrors, since it's literally only two. Ferret emotion. And the raging storm of love. Okay, that one seems dreadful, since it literally boosts them up. And if he isn't around, is she going to buff herself? If I were to rush down mirrors, which I'm probably going to do. He also has shimmering. Hugging fire sitting on a brushwood, singular strike. He also has coordinated attacks, so that means they're going to buff each other. Emotional turbulence, only one single point stab, that's kind of a waste since you can draw it again. Flaming dragon fist, emotional ferrant. Okay, how do I start this? How do I start this? It's a singular strike battle again. It is literally a singular strike battle again. I already returned the decks of everyone, so that's gonna be an issue. I can bring five people into the mix. But technically speaking, it's a 2v4 or 5. Different. <laughs> you have Bonbon, Haru, and Mint. How do you feel? You even have the power of the purple tier. 
would you be interested in this fight? You know what? Sure, why not? <laughs> why not? Why not, right? I mean, they also come with a healing ability, so in that regard, they should be able to handle that just fine. Sure, we're lacking one guy right from the start, but it's alright. We just have to keep them at bay, right? Oh yeah, that's not that's not gonna happen. Okay. Oh, that's gonna be a hit. That's gonna be a hit. Oh god. Okay. Certainly not good. Certainly not good. Oh god, the burn. Literally the burn. Maybe I should have stick with defense after all. Yeah, I should have probably stick with the defense after all. I can see why there's a need for... Oh, shoot. I can see why there's a need for a fifth guy. I can certainly see that. Oh, let's go for that as well. That's not gonna work. I need my guard stance again. Come on. Be lucky. Tiffert, you have to be lucky. But that was lucky. Not, that's not gonna be good. Yeah, you're certainly dead, Tiferet. I'm sorry. I still lack the, the power to actually use uh, the deck. Huh? Hmm. That's not good. I can't have already one floor loose against them. There's two act one. I'm gonna fight against us twice. And it's actually quite difficult to win against all of the clashes. Like, really difficult. But you know what? We'll probably have to do this anyway. I'm gonna give that to Bina for a second. <laughs> I'm gonna give that for Bina. Bina is fine. Bina, Bina should be able to at least show us what happens in the in the second phase, right? Then we can take the serious. Like, really serious. Violent flame. Well, also leaping. Not entirely sure if that action is going to hit, but nonetheless, we can't have to do it like this. Okay, everyone is going to get some protection. So even if she hits you with the mass attack, it should be safe. But still, this is still going to be a taller order. <laughs> okay, first die was protected. Second die hurt quite a bit. The training chain hits. Stack on Cena, that's not good. Down to 110. 100. Uh, 100. Huh? Oh. It doesn't go below 100. Interesting. No, wait. She killed herself. She killed herself. <laughs> okay. Now what? You've all, all died. died. No, one no one remains, remains by, by my side. side. In here, In here you, you fought, fought with me until the end. end. It perished. Perish. I feel lonely as a dragon soaring in the air, my heart heavy with regret. And you only see darkness, I can't see a step ahead. Where must I go? Where does the courage to put one foot forward come from? What did you believe so firmly until your last moment? Was it the hope that will emerge victorious? A strong leader or the goal to earn the books? I certainly won't be able to hear your answer now. However, However, as the as breath, breath of life momentarily rests, rests inside us before it scatters to return to its source, I will meet you again, again one day, and I may I ask you my question then. then. Hmm. You again. You are one you persistent conversationalist, conversation, are you I not? Like. I won't I collapse or succumb to fear out of despair I brought onto myself. There's nothing that a human, no, that I cannot overcome. I believe, I believe that, that I will reach, reach the ideal consequence, consequence if I remain steadfast and proceed with perseverance. And sincerely, ingenuously believe in this. No, no there's no, no need to be disheartened in the face of such a thing. thing. Without I'll despair, hope, hope won't be needed either. either. Fear is born, for there's hope. hope. But bravery, bravery is born, because there's fear. fear. Without, without all of these, there is no life. And what is life without a reason to live? So why would I not bask in this sensation of vitality? 
I would still fight for my own sake. Not to disregard the colleagues who gave their lives for me. No, rather, I would be disregarding their sacrifices if I gave up here because of what happened to them. Hmm. I don't see myself ever agreeing with your words. A lone tree cannot form a forest on its own, you say. <laughs> An interesting tale. Oh! Fire? And she's back, with more health than ever before! Sina's almost dead. Great! The nine children of dragon, dice power plus one at the start of the scene, inflict two burn to all enemy. You don't even have to hit me, you're just inflicting it. Bulao. When Bulao is active, all characters are uninfluenced by any effects of power for the scene. Bulao activates on the first scene and then activates every two scenes. Okay. So power boosts are not effective. Reverse scale. Every scene, use a combat page that deals stagger damage to itself but grants strength if it loses in a clash. Stagger resist is not fully recovered, even if the character is restored from stagger. When act ends. Interesting. Bashia. Take no damage. Uh, <coughs> take no damage from burn. When inflicted with status ailment that isn't burn, reduce the amount by half. Round it down. Does not go below one. Pharaoh's back. First of the wildfire, hugging fire sitting on brushwood. Okay, so she's still all about burning us to death. That's not good. John Q. Okay, this page prompts no action because it has no action, uh, no non counter dices. Six nine three eight. So she also has pure counter dices like us. Beyond. Draw two pages. Six nine five eight three eight. Only defense. Chi Yen. Combat starts. Take then. 10 de less damage from burn for the scene. On use, if a user has burn, recover 4 HP and gain 2 protection next scene. Um, so she's gonna buff herself and recover. Inflict 3 burn to each, to each other. She's gonna inflict herself a burn as well. But she can also lower the damage. So in that regard, it doesn't really hurt her that much. Interesting, and then she has Char C. Last individual gain two strength and endurance 16, inflict one burn, 5, 10, 4, 9. And then Tao Sha, Masturbation, inflict eight burn, 25, 30. That's some strong cards, my girl. Like, really? Huh. Oh, I see! Even, Even if I'm, I'm alone, alone, night, night will come. come. And, every and every night, night is followed, followed by dawn. A mere, mere star that will fade, fade cannot hope, hope to best the, the light, light of the rising sun. sun. Be, prepared be prepared for the day. For the day. A star of the city, city shall, shall be gone. gone. Okay. Are we in the Chinese war? Okay, well. Oh, that's not good! <laughs> She's singing! It means this is a special boss! A very special boss! Okay. Uh, what do I do? Fear Strike and Slash. Emotional Turbulence. At the very least, she got her emotion reset. Reverse Scale. If they die, targeted. Uh, targeted as reverse scale loses the clash. Did 70 stagger damage to self and gain full strength and endurance next scene. Ooh. So I, I should, I should win. Then. No wait, I, I wait. We need to wait. The die targeted as reverse scale loses the clash. 70 stagger damage to self. She has 500 stagger. Over 500. And gain endurance. And strength. I cannot give her that boost. I simply cannot give her that boost. So I have to 
I have to lose against that four four dies. Wait, if I were to clash against it now, what was it with the other ability? Isn't going to, isn't it going to activate again? If we can use her passive against her, at least try your best with this one, I guess. <laughs> okay, that went didn't run really, ran through. She is quite difficult to get through. Like really, it is quite difficult to get through her. At the very least, I was able to inflict four fairies, so that's good. Oh god, Kremlin's about to die. Kremlin is about to die. He died. <laughs> Gods. I barely do, did any damage. She's very powerful and very tanky. <laughs> oh my god. Memory fueled emotion. Why did I already get that? I didn't even... That is the... It's, it's the horn. Should I get that? If I if I defeat her or something? Ah, oh, it's just because I got so much burn. <laughs> I see. Did the others get this as well? Ooh, I got the head from the King of Greed and the horns. Well, at the very least on Tiferet. Ah, I lost my books. But I got the Book of Mirrors at the very least. Wait a second, do I have access to that one card? Assault. Yes, I do. Yes, I freaking do. And if I have to fight against me anyways, I'm certainly going to get that buff at least. Right? <laughs> at the very least. Hopefully. I even got the ski pages. I think I got both of them as well. Yeah, but most importantly, did I yes, coordinated assault. Ooh. That's gonna be a fine addition. And the other ones, still not really sure if they are going to be that helpful. Nevertheless, I need to think this through. I need to think this through, especially since I think I only have like one book of Chun? Well, I still have two of them. And two books of Lowell. So I can still try that twice before I have to go back and fight them again. So, okay. I have an idea. I have an idea. And that all involves in the power of Lowell, Cedric as Puppeteer, and Honey as Nuculi. We have to get through this as quickly and as efficiently as possible in order to be ready for the second phase, because the second phase actually takes a lot of effort to actually beat, seeing how adorable she is and how strong and how quickly she is able to stack the burn on us. And if the acid teams failed, we still have access to Hot's team, who also has access to pretty much all ailments. We can't really rely on power upgrades, but we can still rely on ailments, right? And Tia's gift. Tia's gift might become handy. Maybe. At the very least, it's going to do some extra stagger damage, so that is really appreciated. So first and foremost, yes it. I need your help, yes it. Okay? I mean, the fairy overall was really good, but we really, we really need to make sure that uh, they don't receive as much damage as possible.
Okay, that certainly didn't went that well. <laughs> Holy hell, she's so tanky and the burn stacks, they stack so fast. Okay. I'm gonna give her a couple of hits. Couple of hits, not a lot, a couple. And hope for the best, right? We can only hope for the best, literally. First and foremost, swap to the pierce stance. We need the pierce stance. And then. Oh no, wait, it's blunted. Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid. Oh, fine, we're shooting anyways. We're shooting anyways. We can still go for a regret on the third die. And hope for the best. Yeah, we can only hope for the best. Overcome prices for extra cards. Yeah, that's literally it. Maybe we could... Nah, 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 just... There's a high chance you might die from this, so no. No. Oh my god. <laughs> She's really tanky. None of those attacks went through. Oh my god, that does a lot of stack. Holy hell, how much stagger did that do? Okay. Is that everyone or just... If an ally is defeated, defeats an enemy or covers an all. With this, I can see that dices. She's nowhere near 50% so of dark flames. The thing is... Uh, but the power... power's not gonna help us. I mean... We're literally about to die anyways. I'm gonna give that to... to Yesert. Yep. Did I activate the pierce stance? Yes, I in fact have activated the pierce stance. Could inflict her with bleed, a lot of bleed. But oh, this one that recycles. Oh my god! Okay! And since this is not a mass attack, I need to do it on the fast time. Or something like this, but we can certainly win. Then we can still go for Overcome Crisis. To redirect a couple of his uh, attacks so that yes, it doesn't have to take all of the hits. Okay! First hit, second hit, third hit, fourth hit, fourth hit, oh my god, oh my god, oh. precious, very precious, holy hell, holy, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh no, oh no, what, what the hell, you're murdering her, you're murdering her, Yeah, yeah, this is gonna hurt. This is certainly gonna hurt. Oh, this is gonna hurt a lot. Oh! I'm gonna shoving step. Charge. Cedric is barely alive. At this point, Cedric is barely alive. Need to make the most out of this. <laughs> oh my god! Holy hell! Should I go for regret? Oh no, I don't have the light for it. The next round I have the light. So let's go for puppet block. Puppet block. After all, I don't I don't get any recoveries 
in the next scene. We already have maximum emotion level after all. Oh god, this is gonna hurt so much! I'm, I'm so shall! I didn't thought- I didn't thought it would be that drastic! They literally- <laughs> They almost killed you! They literally almost ripped you apart! Literally! Uh... Regret. Oh, this is gonna hurt as well. This is gonna hurt a lot. Again. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Do I have anything that can recover light? Not really, right? I can stick off a mannequin. Puppet block. Well, uh, this is certainly, certainly going to hurt a lot. Then you're gonna clash against Siesta, which means I can still hit you one more time with Frontal Assault. And then hit you one more time with the uh, Overcome Crisis. And then, uh, yeah, Sedwick is certainly going to die after that. But we're still going to do a lot of damage. Okay. Okay, that didn't went through. Second hit went through. Holy hell. Holy hell. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. oh. <laughs> regret. Why is regret? Whoa, is your I, I still have relentless. Sandwick is still alive for a second. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yes, it. Yes. <laughs> what? What are you doing? What are you doing? What am I gonna do now? I don't have the light. Imagine if I had enough light to go for the next one. Yes, it would have been able to solo her completely. Ooh. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Repressed flesh. Then. Uh, this is counter dice. I have to block this one next. I don't have access to many attacks that can actually get through it. Is it actually going? Okay, this one is going towards the last die, so I can block it. This one goes to the first one. There's nothing I can do about that one then. I can counter my counter dice, but... Uh, yeah, that's literally it. An overcome crisis, that's literally the last thing I could do. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is so bad, too bad, yes, it right. You almost got her. You almost got her. She's, she's almost, she's barely alive. She's barely alive at this point. Oh my god. Oh my god. And you guys wonder why I barely use yes, it's steam. You guys warned me about the power. It's warned me about the power. Oh my god. Okay, uh, hot uh, guys. Uh, would you would you be so kind? It oh, it didn't even recover her stagger. Why didn't you even recover your stagger? How cruel of a fate is that? <laughs> How cruel. Which means overcome crisis is going to come next. Devastating trashing, because why not? And we're going to apply a little bit of switcheroo paralysis on it as well. Just to play it safe. Just a bit safe, you know? She still has access to a lot of uh, defensive dices, all things considered, so in that regard we have to be a bit careful about it. But as I already said, she's barely alive at that point. It's actually surprising how devastating re regret is, right? Literally, one regret, 50% stagger gone. And she has so much. She has so much. <laughs> oh god. And they were barely alive when I started this phase as well. You saw how, how relentlessly Cedric stayed alive and, and ripped her apart with harmony. <laughs> oh god. Oh, did you get anything from that? 
We can help you with anything. Oh, that's cute. Emotional turbulence, memory fueled emotions, form of a horn. Maybe you're just going to get that when you when you fight against the first version of Shao. Yeah, that would explain why they were able to get all of that. Huh. Nevertheless, I appreciate the ego badges. Thank you very much, Shao. One second though. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I actually recorded that. <laughs> that would have been messy if I didn't. Anyways, in the end, Xiao has become a book, like everyone else. She didn't break down like the other kids with the power, uh, with the power did at least. I was actually amazed by how unserving her de de uh, determination could be. Mm -hmm. Lost deep in thoughts again, huh? What is it this time? If we're thinking about this distinct as uh, distinction between ego and the distortion after watching Philip and Xiao. The two were similar, yet different. They clearly had some things in common, but the contrast was apparent as well. Really? Well, tell me your thoughts then. I think there's something that can restrain one from reaching the point of distortion. They both had highly unstable emotions, enough to touch the threshold of manifesting ego or distortion, and those emotions had a similar nature as well. Egoism. Egoism? As in the mindset of only caring about your own interest? That's it. The two interpreted the same selfishness in a disparate way, however. Because that selfish mind had the potential to change the self, the two were able to take the form a form resembling ego, albeit incompletely. Philip's mindset was flawed even in his awakening, however, he still had distrust in the back of his mind. Ah, I think Shao had the same problem too. She didn't look like she had full conviction at the start. It took some time for her to make up her mind after all. That is where the two differ, as far as I can see. It had something to do with the voice only they could hear, I believe. The voices, huh? Now that you mention it, the voice even returned in the cutscene in between of the fights as well. Indeed, Philip's mind was in such a vulnerable state, even Oswald's word could crack it. I don't know what the dissembling voice Pluto told Philip to pay close attention to said, or if the voice really was the lost straw that broke him, but I, I could speculate a little based on what we saw in Xiao. She didn't give in to the voice whispering to her. Instead, her will solidified further. Ah, so she managed to fully manifest her ego by disobeying the voice? Or rather, pushing the voice away? Right, she was able to resist the voice's sneer. Uh, voice sneer. I wonder why she could do that. It might be what we. or rather, what she said when she first came here. The precious thing and whatever. All the things that motivates human to live, to be precise, I guess. I guess it's not something that can be pinned down to one specific element. Each person cherishes different things, after all. Maybe ego's the thing that keeps one from crossing the line of the distortion. It's like walking on a tightrope at all times. One wrong step and you crash to the ground. Suppose you're right, Roland. I mean, even Gabura said that even though she has mastered her own ego, there's always a fight in her mind. The, the voices of herself pushing her further and further, and if she ever loses grip, she might go berserk, as we already saw before, right? Either way, it is weird though. It can't be possible to make any changes with, uh, with just willpower in this world. That's not how the city works. Maybe the world is about to change then. It's not as simple as that. If this power really has the potential to shift the ecology of the city, the head would take action in any time. True. Even the head does intervene. It won't make a difference after all. We simply greet them as guests, like any other. True. If they ever decide to show up here, we're just going to take them down, like everyone else. <laughs> okay. Now, how many books did I get? I got four of them. I'm gonna burn three. Let's see if I can actually get the key page. Crossing fingers here. Eh? Nope. <laughs> of course not. 
What did I hope for, right? What did I hope for? It's not even close. I think even if I were to- ah, let me just burn the last book as well. <laughs> even if I were to book the, the last one, I'm, I'm not gonna get the key paid for it. Nope. <laughs> of course not. Why would I? <laughs> oh man, okay, I have to fight this fight again. I have to get the key pages, right? I have to get the key pages. <laughs> Nevertheless, I hope you guys had fun with today's part. In the next part, we are probably going to start the last path, unlock a couple of abnormalities, and finally take care of Tiferet's abnormality. Hopefully. Maybe. Maybe on Wednesday or something. Nevertheless, I hope you guys had fun, and see you next Monday. Until then, bye-bye!